everyone. Happy St. Patrick's Day and welcome to KenCast. We've got a great show for you today. A lot to talk about. We want to talk about St. Patrick's Day and what that could mean for Terry Silver fans and Cobra Kai fans. Uh, we've got uh, some discussion about Cobra Kai season six and most importantly, Paul Walter Hauser, who plays Stingray on the Cobra Kai series. He is wrestling in real life and we want to go talk about all the news about that. And in order to do that, I thought we'd bring in one of the foremost experts, not only on Cobra Kai character analysis, but also wrestling. Uh, so it is my pleasure to have back to the show, Strife the Warrior. Strife, how are you today? I'm doing, kid. Did you mention wrestling? We totally <laughs> didn't plan this at all. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, that's great. No, no, wait, wait. Hang on, hang oh, on. All right. Yeah, Just show, show everybody. Yeah, yeah so. show us. This is the, uh, of course, back when it was WWF, this is a replica of the World Championship belt. Uh, I think it was the one Austin first won, and then, of course, he turned into the smoking the smoking uh, skull belt. And, of course, we have the the old school uh, Intercontinental title. So this one was around the 80s, I think, when Randy Savage uh, won it, kind of around that era. Uh, yes. and some of you guys may have been following my Instagram. Uh, last year, I cosplayed Razor Ramon. And then uh, we went and saw the Royal Rumble in person in San Antonio because uh, the Royal Rumble always happens around my birthday. Uh, so uh, I dressed up as Razor Ramon. I had a friend dressed up as Triple H and I had another friend dressed up as uh, 90s mullet uh, Shawn Michaels. And then I had my girlfriend dressed up as Asuka, one of the uh, the current wrestlers as of today. So, Wow, that's so cool. And, and Strife, for people who are watching who haven't been to your channel yet, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your interests and uh, where people can find you. Sure. Uh, so, of course, uh, my name is Strife the Warrior. Uh, you can find me at uh, pretty much anything uh, Strife the Warrior, so like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I offer an alternative sp perspective on your favorite TV shows, movies, video games, and anime. Uh, I started uh, roughly around uh, the end of 2020 when we were all kind of waiting for season three. Uh, and yeah, I just kind of just uh, the rest is history. I cover, you know, of course, Cobra Kai, uh, Rock and Creed series. If you've heard me, uh, if you've heard any of my videos, you've kind of mentioned how like Cobra Kai tends to write, write almost kind of like a wrestling show of like protecting certain characters of who wins and who loses, which I'm something I'm sure we'll talk about in today's KinCast. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, covered Rocky and Creed. Uh, you know, uh, I've covered a few couple uh, different animes. So, way the House Husband, Tiger and Bunny. Uh, as far as interest, I have interest in all of that. I'm definitely a wrestling fan, as you can see. I was very excited when uh, CM Punk came back last year. Uh, you know, uh, WWE. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, today's discussion. And all, as always, thanks for having me, Ken. Of course, Strife. It's always a pleasure. Uh, we've had so many conversations, not only about Cobra Kai, but video games. We've talked about wrestling before. We might talk the most about wrestling today than we ever have before, uh, because it's kind of a rare intersection of everything today. Um, so everyone, definitely, if you're enjoying this, go ahead and hit like, subscribe on this channel, but go over and follow Stripe the Warrior on his YouTube channel, on all his social media as well. I will have uh, links in the description where you can find all his stuff. So uh, before we jump into this, let's let's say hello to everyone. Gabe, good to see you, Gabe. He says, as a longtime wrestling fan, I'm so excited for this. Yeah, yeah, me too. AEH, it's great to see you. Nerd World, <laughs> wonderful to see you. Uh, Jasmine, thanks for stopping by. John Nasa Kane's fan, thanks for being a channel member. Uh, John Spangler, great to see you. Marianella, uh, hello, good to see you. How's you know my week was very hectic, but pretty good. Uh, Strife, what, how was how was your week this past week? It was all right. It was steady. Uh, I was, uh, I've kind of been, uh, when I met, when we were talking earlier today, I was mentioning on, on the way back to the gym, I was out of the gym for a couple of weeks. I had a really bad ab sprain. I was overworking my abs and core. So, oh. uh, but other than that, it has been all right. It, I've been kind of getting back into the swing of things. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention in my little spiel, uh, I'm starting to do watch parties for, uh, as we're kind of working our way through season six. So we've already done the first two Karate Kid movies this coming week, we'll do uh, Karate Kid Part 3, and that's probably something oh. I can plug at the end of the show, too. Uh, so I've been, been doing that, kind of getting back in the swing of things. Uh, Y'all definitely will see some shorts and some videos from me soon. 
so yeah, no, other than that, my week was pretty good. Uh, got a lot of rain here the past couple of days in Texas, but uh, no flooding or anything like that, thankfully. So that's good. That's great. Yeah. yeah that's uh, everyone who's a fan here. Karate Kid 3 is huge. Uh, I might have to try and come to your watch party on Karate Kid 3. That's for sure. Well, let, let's talk about that for sure later on. Um, uh, Nerd World, Ken, you're not wearing green. You're going to get pinched. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Uh, Kate says, hit that like button. Thanks for being a channel member, Kate. Thanks for being a channel member, Ford. It's great to see all you guys. Um, the DJ Club rules. Thank you for joining us. Keep those comments coming. We love to hear from you. Uh, and before we get going today, uh, Strife, I saw something really cool on Twitter, posted on Twitter last week. And we had Peter Vonisak from Cobra Kai Companion on last week. And now we have you on this week. And I thought I'd bring this up. And you can kind of tell us about this. Look at that. Uh, the, one of the new guys in the OGs, man. So that was that was a <laughs> lot of fun. Uh, real quick, though, I want to say uh, what not Nasty Canes. Yes, definitely rest, rest in peace, Scott Hall. It actually was earlier this week, uh, two years since he passed, uh, which was, you know, a huge shock to everybody, especially yes. given his, uh, you know, his comeback from addiction and stuff like that. So definitely one of the greats. Uh, but yeah, uh, so I got to meet uh, Peter last week. He was in town uh, for a wedding. And, um, you know, he's like, yeah, I'll be down in Texas. And I was like, dude, yeah, like, like, let's meet up. You know, I don't know when I'll have this opportunity again. So uh, I not only met Peter, but I met like uh, a, lot, a lot of his family that day, too. But they were very nice and very welcoming, uh, you know, very, very nice people. But yeah, it was really fun. Uh, you know, I've always respected Peter's work, especially because I consider him one of the Cobra Kai content creator OGs, especially with, you know, Cobra Kai theory. Uh, they were all kind of around that same time. So uh, if it wasn't for, you know, people like him, uh, you and I probably would not have had our starts either. So as far as like, you know, looking to them for inspiration. So a lot of yeah. fun. We got to talk, uh, catch up in, you know, in real life and also talk about speculation for season six. So it was, it was really cool just to kind of, because, you know, often, uh, at least in my perspective, it, you know, definitely I, it's one thing where I can I talk to like people that like, like my channel and say, Hey, I get to talk, you know, and it's nothing like in a bad way, like, but you know, it's from like a different perspective when you talk to somebody else. Like, like it felt like you and I kind of talk and we talk about our own speculations. It's always fun, like when you get like that, like one on one, like, oh man, this would be cool if this would happen and this would happen. Kind of like uh, something that you don't really often really get to experience as a content creator. Uh, you know, talking with mm -hmm. another uh, kind of like fan uh, about the same passion you share. So, I know. Someday, Strife, someday I'll have to make it out there and we can meet up too. Because mm -hmm. I agree, it's like one of the coolest things is like, you know, getting to know you and talk with you about all these things, but then like getting to meet you in person, that's like a whole different level. And uh, yeah, it's kind of amazing. It's kind of an amazing world we live in now where we're all like connected, but we haven't even met each other in yeah. person yet, you know? Right. Uh, so that so that's so that's amazing. I want to okay, so next, real quick, before we get into talking about wrestling. I want to wish everyone a uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Want to wish Storm Chaser Reed Timmer a very happy birthday. Uh, if you're watching out there, Reed, have hope hope you're having a great day and hope you see a lot of tornadoes this year. Um, of course, St. Patrick's Day for Cobra Kai fans is known for something else. Uh, Cobra Kai Wisdom Mike says, no, I'm not sitting here waiting to see if Tig makes a St. Patrick's Day post this year, whether or not he has long hair in it. Why are you? <laughs> so I thought that was so funny because, uh, and if for everyone who doesn't know what Mike is talking about, uh, let me let me bring this up real quick, and I'll get your thoughts on this, Jeremy, too. Um, Tig Terry Silver Rocks, who is executive producer of uh, this KenCast, uh, is posting these videos now videos of Thomas Ian Griffith, even before coming back to Cobra Kai, he would make these St. Patrick's Day videos. And here's, I'll play just a sample. Yeah, I remember seeing this one before. And there are so many of those uh, strife where like every, it seems like a tradition every year he posts one, but now all of us are wondering if Terry Silver is going to come back to Cobra Kai season six. We think he probably is, but um, people are waiting to see if there's a video and if he's showing long hair, 
which would indicate ponytail, Terry Silver. Um, I, I will have you know, I am right now, everyone, this is something you can help us with as we're doing this. Um, I've got Thomas Ian Griffith's page up here. Let's see if there are any updates. You know, Let us know if there are any updates, any posts, any videos uh, in the meantime. But what do you, what do you think, Strife? So do you think uh, we could infer from a video perhaps today from Thomas Ian Griffith whether Terry Silver will be back in Cobra Kai season six? Or do you think fans should just rest easy and he'll he'll probably be back anyway? Yeah, I, I think the video would probably, uh, it would definitely, you know, help us some kind of confirmation in season six. But given the way season five ended, I think it's it's likely we'll see him. And I would say maybe about 65, 70%, 70% just because you kind of have to wonder if he and Crease will call a cross pass at some point, um, you know, with, you know, Crease busting out of jail and then Silver going into jail. Um, it'd be interesting to do that but then at the same time i'm also thinking crease would probably be long gone from the prison to kind of just you know to kind of lay low uh and whatnot but it would be nice to, at least if they had him in like an episode or two to kind of wrap up his arc because i feel like how big season six is what we've heard from the rumors and things like that um they're gonna have like a lot to cover and i'm sure they don't want to kind of just like cram everything so um and just probably space out the details so i would say about maybe 65 70 70 chance that we'll see uh silver i also feel like if he's not in the season there might be a little bit of a backlash because of how impactful uh you know he was in for, uh, season four and five right and and you're right too because there are some dangling storylines that would have to be resolved right like his relationship with crease you know that's that that's not quite resolved you've got um since uh kim daun you know whatever she's going to be doing with his students with Cobra Kai, uh, you know, whatever happened between them isn't necessarily resolved. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's totally fair. Now, my question to you is if we see him in a video today and we can tell that he has long hair, does that percentage go up for you? Yeah, I, I would say so. Cause maybe then they show him in prison where they force him to cut his hair or something like that. But uh, which would be, you know, that would be kind of interesting too, because I've also have heard, uh, I've had like a couple of other friends that when they were watching the Cobra Kai show, and I've also, I'm pretty sure I've seen this on the internet too. Like when, when Terry has his hair down, he's normal, you know, quote unquote. But when he has right. his hair up, that's, of course, he's more sinister and menacing. So um, that could maybe like, it'd be kind of, I guess, maybe some kind of, weird parallel where if his hair is cut off, it kind of like damages his psyche or something. So either way, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Yes, I know. I can't wait. And for all of us who are uh, on a team save silver, we hope, we hope he appears. Cause that'll mean he's saved. That means he he's not going to jail unfairly. Mm. So uh, John Spangler says they will all go to an anger management class. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I think that's fun. I think that's fun. Um, Marianella says, I have a theory that maybe Terry will come back to save Kreese's life, or maybe there will be a fight between the two. Yeah. I, the possibilities are endless. Do you, do you have a feel? Do you have a, if Terry were to come back based on your character analysis, you do all this deep, amazing character analysis. If he were to come back, what would you want to see from a character standpoint from Terry Silver? Uh, we would, uh, um, I don't know necessarily from a character standpoint, but I think the one thing we would have to see is Terry versus Cruz. Like that's the kind of like the one matchup that we haven't really seen yet. And the matchup that needs to happen because, you know, we got Terry versus Daniel, Terry versus Johnny. Ter we even got Terry versus Chosen. Um, almost had Terry versus Mike. But yeah, I think Terry versus Cruz is the one that everybody needs to see. But character standpoint, um, Perhaps maybe he'll go through a similar arc of what kind of Crease somewhat did, at least in season five, before he was kind of revealed to be a farce, is where he kind of had like that inner realization um, and kind of, you know, realizing what he did as far like, you know, throughout his life. So I think that would be a very similar arc we would see with Terry. Um, but also maybe it could also be another thing where he's kind of like Crease too far gone and it's kind of too late for him to change his ways. And then maybe he suffers some consequences as a result of that. So, yeah. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Guys, if you have not subscribed to Strife the Warrior, subscribe because you'll gain a whole new 
appreciation for all of these characters. Um, whenever he makes a video, uh, it, he goes into detail about all this. Now, let's before we get into wrestling, this has been coming up a lot. John Spangler has a question. Hey, Ken, I heard Dutch is coming back. Is this true? Okay, so I don't know. Obviously, Strife, you have your ear, <laughs> you know, on the railroad track as well. As far as Cobra Kai stuff, the only I have no clue. All I know, all I know is that he did have a post on his Instagram, his daughter made years ago, thanking the fans for supporting him and everything and saying he will, that Chad McQueen will not appear in the Cobra Kai series. That post has been removed. So that's not up there anymore. So people have been using that to speculate, well, this could this mean that he might appear because who removes those kinds of posts? Who goes back years to remove Instagram posts? So um, so that's all. I have no clue. No one knows. Uh, I don't know. Strife, do you have an opinion on that? Yeah, it, it could be possible that they, um, that maybe for like, hey, this is the last one, you know, we'd like to, like you to come back. It, that definitely could happen. Um, but the other, the other part I think about that too, though, is like, maybe they also removed it because they got tired of just being asked the same question over and over, which is understandable. Like, Hey, are you coming back? Are you coming back? Are you coming back? So, um, yeah, I, it, it could go either way. I would like to see, obviously I would like to see Dutch be in season six. I would like to see Julie, of course. Um, I mean, really Freddie too, that the one that kind of started the whole rivalry between Johnny and Daniel in the first place by <laughs> inviting him to that beach party. So, um, so yeah, I think those, those definitely need to be like some characters we need to see back, you know, even snake, I'd like for snake and Dennis to at least kind of come back in some form, but, um, yeah, yeah that'd be yeah. awesome. It, it, it could, it could, I think it could be gone either way. If he does come back, I think it'll definitely be a, a very talked about moment because, you know, unfortunately we didn't get to have him come back in season two before, uh, you know, Tommy's actor, uh, passed away at risk in peace. So, um, yeah, it, it would be really cool for him to come back in season six. I know. Would you make, uh, do, do you anticipate if he does come back or it seems like he's coming back, do you think you would make more Dutch videos? Yeah, I, I probably would at least do a character analysis on him. I don't know if he would have like a major role. Um, it could be maybe something related to uh, Terry and Kreese's arc of how maybe at one point they kind of see themselves like in a somewhat of a redemption standpoint where we kind of saw that with Kreese in season four where like, you know, Cobra Kai corrupts and this is the result of that um so you know as we know create or not crease dutch had kind of went down a very spiraling path even after um you know after the events of karate kid as i mentioned in my hawk analysis video he was the one that actually turned his back on johnny being choked out by crease and did nothing to help yeah. him so right i know isn't that man that's i know qu quite a crazy move uh yeah it, it, definitely fascinating fascinating character um okay so strife now if you'd like let's get into wrestling and paul walter hauser so do you so coming into today do you know anything about him wrestling um have you heard about it at all and we're going to play some videos about like this match that just happened but um have you seen that lately at all I've not seen the match. I didn't realize it was happening so soon. I've I've definitely heard about it. Um, as those of you know, again, as I mentioned before, I am a wrestling fan. I remember seeing that he was training at one point and that he did like a couple match. I could be wrong, or maybe he was training for something on the indies, um, outside of the the Matt Cardona match. But I know he's definitely a wrestling fan, of course. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he was the one that, you know, uh kind of like did some of the like the wrestling Easter eggs. Uh, in season five, like where you sing um, the song Judas by, you know, Chris Jericho, who's obviously also a wrestler. So, uh, no, I haven't been I haven't followed this match at all. Uh, I haven't seen it or anything like that. But, um, you know, I definitely know Matt Cardona, of course, uh, for those that were familiar with WWE. He was known as Zack Ryder, very underutilized talent. It was a shame that the way he got treated. But now it's I'm really happy for him that now that he's on the Indies, he's making a name for himself. And uh, both of them got interviewed by Chris Van Vliet recently which for some of you that may not know uh chris van lee was kind of a reporter slash interviewer he's um not only just in wrestling but he's gonna interview you know famous actors and actress like um i can't think of her name um she, she played uh catwoman in dark knight returns oh uh ann hathaway 
Yes, there you go. There you go. Uh, and Hathaway, of course, the rock. Well, I mean, the rock's wrestler, but uh, yeah, if you go to his channel, you've seen like he's been in the uh, that you know, that interview game for like a long, long time, and now he has a very uh, successful podcast. Um, uh, so much to where wrestlers kind of consider him to be part of the industry. So, wow, that's uh, that's so cool. Okay, so, um, I'm going to play some videos for you, and this is from this past week, um, showing. Uh, kind of this amazing confrontation between not only wrestler Matt Cardona and Paul Walter Hauser, but um, it's the Cobra Kai cast. So the Cobra Kai cast came back at Matt Cardona. So I thought this was amazing. And we all we all need to check this out. Uh, let me bring this up. So Co Cobra Kai cast insults Matt Cardona. Um, hopefully we won't get flagged, but let's. Uh, Let's go ahead and play this. I don't think I can hear it from my side, but I can at least try to make out what he's saying. Oh, he can't. You can't hear it. Oh, mm -hmm. darn it. Um, That's okay. Yeah, we. I'll, I'll so we keep watching. So So he's saying he'll ha he'll hand him the Slammy Award. Let, let me let me try this. Let me try sharing it a different way to see if we can get because I don't okay. want you guys to be watching this and not know what they're saying because that's that's most most of the fun. Okay, so okay, let's see if this is better. I Okay, I can hear it now. I beat you. I'm gonna take that Emmy Award. Am I gonna display it? proudly in my toy room am i gonna sign it and sell it on ebay no i'm gonna spit on it and shove it straight up your cobra kai ass see that revolver bro <laughs> wow there you go <laughs> so okay before we before we continue what, what are your thoughts good promo definitely uh even just hearing the last part of that um the one thing too, you know, when I talked about WWE underutilized, um, you know, back in the 2010s, it was definitely a different landscape. It, it, it was kind of wrestling was kind of on a decline at that point, at least WWE wise. Um, so what Matt did at that time as Zack Ryder, which a lot of people um, didn't really think of at the time, because YouTube was still kind of in its early years. Uh, he actually got over and getting over mean with the crowd means, you, you know, you're kind of like earning the respect or you're getting popular with them essentially. He got over with the crowd via his YouTube channel. He's just started kind of doing like a lot of YouTube promos because they weren't really utilizing him on TV. And then, of course, WWE didn't like that because at that, I think at one point, I don't know if he was more popular than John Cena. I, I could be wrong, but he was he was getting up there um, to where like even if you go to his channel now, you'll see that like one of his still his most viewed videos are the promos he did back then. So he was definitely striking some kind of connection with the crowd. And because of, you know, he kind of one of the early pi pioneers of using YouTube and like that format to, you know, connect with the audience. So, yeah, I, I um, definitely uh, uh, not surprised at how good the promo was just because of, you know, Matt's uh, mic work. And, you know, even looking from now to then too like he's gotten like uh, even bigger as far as physique wise, too. So he's definitely uh, he's definitely up there. And I can understand why now people call him uh, king of the indies. So. Yeah, he was really, I thought he was really impressive. Uh, and, you know, obviously using social media, but this is such an amazing old school way to sort of like taunt your opponents. And, uh, you know, it's it's just, yeah, it's so much fun. Um, okay, so I want to play you this now. Okay. Uh, this is a response um, from not only Paul Walter Hauser, but the cast of Cobra Kai. All right, so let me know if you can't hear this. I'm okay. going to... Um, I'm going to play this because I think it's pretty cool. Billy, what do you think of Matt Cardona? Matt Cardona. 
Matt Cardona. Matt Cardona. Oh, yeah, isn't he the indie geek? The t-shirt guy? With not like five minutes in my dojo. What is this finishing move? Calling his mother? Yeah, no. I'm going all in on Hauser. Matt Cardona, how do you like that? One of your favorite shows, Cobra Kai. One of your favorite movies, the Karate Kid series. And here I am getting the approval of all of your heroes. You see, there's a difference between being in business for yourself and being a team player. You, Matt Cardona, are in this clearly for yourself. I am an actor, but rest assured, I'm part of a stable every time I show up. I am a team player. I support my fellow actors and crew, and I am not just in it for me. I am in it for we. So, on March the 16th in Clive, Iowa, just know that what I lack in experience, I gain in we. Don't know what that means? Hmm. You're going to find out. Bye, indie dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay no oh, no man. disrespect to billy um or ralph but obviously i think martin kind of stole the show, show even in that little snippet out of them three at least just because and it's funny too because like the way martin you know delivers his lines and whatnot like that very slow and calculating way like easily like could have easily been uh, a wrestling manager at one point too yeah i think uh even paul too paul's promo was really good there's a i can't remember what's movie but i've seen it floating around like on youtube shorts and stuff like that there is a movie where he's playing some guy uh maybe it's a risk manager or something like that and and the lady's like can you uh like hey can you switch seats from my daughter she really wants to see how the plane and he's like well maybe your daughter uh, no your daughter needs to learn uh what disappointment in life looks like and <laughs> it was just like <laughs> it was just really uh, you know far cry from his stingray character uh that he's played so yeah i yeah definitely a a good promo is uh here as well so yeah, that's that's pretty wild. I totally agree with you. Like Martin Cove is perfect. My gosh, he's just so like intimidating and everything. Um I so so that's kind of cool. It's sort of like Cobra Kai is you know, sort of embracing this part for uh Paul Walter Hauser and it's so interesting that he's doing this. Uh I I think he wants to play a wrestler at some point or or something, but it's it's so cool that he's he's doing all this. One thing I'll point out, I don't know if you'll agree with me. At the when William Zabka was there, and he's asking William Zabka to to say something, you know, against Matt Cardona. It's that same sort of textured white wall in the background, and you can tell Paul Walter Hauser is there with him. Mm -hmm. And that that white wall might be like the trailers or accommodations for the cast in Cobra Kai. So that might put Paul Walter Hauser in Atlanta. So it looks like is that confirmation that stingray will appear in uh cover kai season six uh, yeah could be could we could we could you get the still frame in that just to just to make yeah, sure yeah absolutely let me uh um and also to kind of mention too cobra kai is not has not shied away from wrestling easter eggs in the past uh i know season two it was either chris mitch or both that were wearing wrestling shirts uh and then rest they brought up a previous wrestlemania where the heart foundation was a tag team in season three um, and of course, I know a lot of people pointed out, like in season five, when Mitch joined rejoined Cobra Kai and how he did, did the whole reveal of him wearing a Cobra Kai shirt was very similar to how, uh, like in the 90s during the, the Monday Night Wars, where somebody that was joined in NWO they would do the whole reveal with the sh shirt and have the NWO shirt underneath. So, yes, um, here, let me bring this up for you. Oops. Billy, what do you think of Matt Cardona? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, could be. Uh, but I also haven't, was... I haven't seen oh, that ahead. wall before, though. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, it could be. So, this wall, if um, the season six promo, if you look at the season six promo, this was a wall that had uh, Tanner Buchanan and Mary Mauser were standing in front of the similar wall, and oh, okay. um, and also uh, Sean Kanan made a video post where he was in front of the same wall as well and so 
that's just a guess. That's just a sure. guess. But it seems like Paul Walter Hauser is with William Zabka in Atlanta, somewhere near the set of Cobra Kai in this video. Right. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. You know, especially if a few people have been in front of that wall before. Yeah, that mean, definitely means something. So, uh, yeah, it, yeah. it could it could be. Um, I would same thing. I would say probably um, Stingray would. I don't know if he would have like a major role like he did in season five, but definitely maybe something to kind of tie up the Silver Creek storyline in uh, season six. Right. Cause yeah, he's kind of, he's part of the team now, right? He's, he's definitely part of the team. Like he's, he's really mm -hmm. helped everyone, but yeah, he's changing his testimony though. Yeah, you're right. Maybe there'll, right. there'll be fallout from that. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was fun. Um, okay. So now you'll notice that in those videos, the fight was yesterday, March 16th. So we can now report what happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yesterday, if you guys are curious, uh, we've got some video from, from the actual, uh, match itself. Uh, let, let me pull this up here. Okay. So here we go. Here's Matt Cardona posting. Uh, this is it. Uh, Paul Walter Hauser and, uh, Bull Ray. Uh, put me through a flaming table tonight. <laughs> let, oh, yeah, let if it's me, who uh, I think it is. It's one of the Dudley boys. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. That's, that's oh, okay. Yeah, sad. that's that's uh, uh, Bubba Ray Dudley. Uh, but he's down, he's also known as Bully Ray. But yeah, uh, he was one of the Dudley boys in the Attitude Era. Wow. Now that. That was quite a, a finishing move. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that looked really dangerous. Yeah. Oh, you should have. If you thought that was dangerous, you see the the WrestleMania where they did a similar spot where it was it was Mick Foley versus Edge, and it was the same thing. Uh, where Edge basically uh, speared or tackled uh, Mick Foley, who's also known as Mankind, through the table in a similar manner. And yeah, that 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 match was pretty brutal too. So, wow. Well, here you go, guys. This is uh, the uh, Stingray or Paul Walter Hauser celebrating his win. You know what? He won. I'll give him the respect of all three names. Of the Golden Globe. He's fucking undefeated. He Revolver. is undefeated. 2-0 and oh in Wrestling Revolver. And appears to have the approval if not the friendship of Bully Ray. Oh, wait, Hauser asking for a microphone. Talk about now, wait, I have to wonder. I wasn't sure how Paul Walter Hauser was going to prepare for a no-need cue match. I think he's been talking to Bully Ray the whole time. Kill the outdated 80s rock that I dearly love. <laughs> Who was already having a crazy good night tonight before Bully Ray showed up? Not Mac Cardona. Clive Iowa, I am freaking humbled by you. Thank you for showing up and being the greatest fans. I have ever performed in front of. I'll, I'll stop it there. Uh, definitely, everyone, go ahead and check out his speech. Uh, okay, so we've seen we, we've had a long history strife of wrestlers becoming actors, and this is an instance of an actor becoming a wrestler. I mean, what what are, what are your thoughts on this? Like, this award winning actor is doing wrestling. Is this is this pretty wild, or is this like a new age of wrestling? Uh, what what is going on here? It's definitely one of those um, molds that it's very rare for people to do it well. Uh, I mean, technically, the first one that I can think of, and maybe this probably not even the first one to ever do it, but these people that come would definitely come to people's mind. I mean, Andy Kaufman. You know, Andy yes. Kaufman did that uh, stint with Jerry Lawler. Uh, of course, David Arquette uh, in the '90s, of course not his best run, but at least he, he also did a run. Uh, it was, I think the, the later part of the last decade where he 
was like, you know, like, no, nah, I kind of want to re- redeem how bad WCW was like in the 90s. Um, he did some like really crazy matches too uh, on the indie circuit, uh, David Arquette. So um, Paul Walter Hauser, I think he his is probably going to be no- more notable, especially if he won an Emmy and doing that, doing that and whatnot too. Um, I mean, the fact that people are taking a chance by booking him seems to show that people believe in him and his potential as far as that goes. So he could be, um, could be maybe somebody we can keep an eye on in the future, like, you know, and and wrestling wise. Um, And it's not, it's no stranger that, you know, like there are big guys that have excelled in the ring before, Uh, you know, of course, Andre, the giant, uh, even from an athletic standpoint, uh, Bam Bam Bigelow. um, If anybody's Mm -hmm. ever seen him wrestle, you know, he's done cartwheels and moonsaults. Vader, too, was very kind of agile for his size with the, the moonsault. Yokozuna as well, um, mm-hmm. you know, 500 pounds throwing super kicks like he was a, a karate champion. So, um, yeah, um, I think it's definitely going to be interesting to see what he does from here on out, especially if his second match was against Matt Cardona. Um, that alone kind of speaks like, yeah, there's like a lot of stakes high stakes and people definitely kind of these believe Paul can do something, especially if he's also going to be wrestling Hauser next, which I saw kind of in that tweet, uh, who's, uh, you know, definitely somebody prominent in AEW right now. So it's going to be interesting to see where he goes from here. Okay. And then for those of us who don't quite understand how the wrestling world is arranged right now, like obviously we know about the WWE then you talk about like wrestling revolver, like these indies. So is it that, the actors are not known as wrestlers and so it's easier for them to get matches in the sort of like independent world or would we see someone like Paul Walter Hauser in the WWE or or how does that work yeah i um i'm not sure how exactly it's uh how that you know how his booking when i came to be but um there's definitely kind of a resurgence with the indies right now especially with somebody like Matt Cardona on the scene um so like in the past kind of decade or so you know, obviously, like, way they kind of like kind of back up to kind of give a wrestling history lesson. So, back in the day before WWE, then WWF was very prominent, you had wrestling territories where there were like regions like all around the US where you would have like wrestlers would go from one territory to another. And that's kind of how they would get like exposure and become more well known. WWF kind of changed that because they kind of went, you know, global and national and things like that. So, all the territories were either bought up or died out. And so now there are still like independent territories. Uh, not territories, I'm sorry, but there's still independent scenes, uh, an independent scene here uh, throughout the U.S. And so a lot of the times now, like in the past, like in the 2010s and up to now, you would have a lot of wrestlers that are on the independent scenes that would kind of uh, be, you know, sought out by the WWE. So like CM Punk, for example, uh, Brian Danielson, uh, Seth Rollins, who was Tyler Black at that time. Uh, you also have like people that wrestle in Japan and Canada and all these other promotions that they would kind of get known. So for whatever reason, I guess because Matt is on a hot hot streak right now, for whatever reason, he chose to kind of work with Paul because, you know, Paul started kind of like uh, breaking into the business too. So it was one of those things where I I definitely assume that they just saw kind of money in that opportunity, especially if, you know, if Paul can actually work as a wrestler and what I mean, like, what I mean by work is, you know, he can actually kind of perform, you know, a capable level, then people definitely have faith in him, especially on the indie scene. And not to mention the reason I brought up AEW, they're a little bit more lax on how they kind of send wrestlers to different independent scenes and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, he might have uh, kind of a, a shot there too. So. Right. And we've got a super chat from NASA Kane's fan. Thank you so much, John. $10. I would like to see, some form of kayfabe come back wrestling lost me with the jerry springer pre-written nonsense so yeah strife tell me about this because I, obviously wrestling has gone through just so many different phases mm-hmm. uh I, do you have a preference uh, is there room for for some of this or uh what what are your feelings on this yeah it, it's hard yeah it's hard for them to have any kind of kayfabe now and what kayfabe basically just kind of means like in storyline and for them to kind of like make it seem that much believable uh, it's hard to have that now because of how some have exposed the business, like Vince McMahon, for example, uh, when he went on the whole steroid trial in the 90s. Um, there are some people out there that still kind of at least do kayfabe, um, you know, somewhat through their social media and stuff like that. And I think um, I will say this, though. Wrestling writing has be, has gotten better than what it used to be. Um, 
And what I'm assuming that Nessa Kane's talked about is definitely kind of like some of the stuff like in the Attitude Era or um, like, you know, in WCW and things like that. And of course, WWE uh, has definitely had had some bad storylines in the past. I mean, you look at the whole Vince McMahon scandal, he kind of was like hiding in plain sight with all of the storylines he's done in the past. So, um, yeah, I definitely. Um, Obviously, before, like back in the 70s and 80s and 90s, there was a lot more kayfabe than there is now because there wasn't social media. There wasn't people kind of going out there exposing the business. So, so yeah, I think there's still some good wrestlers out there that kind of like um, uh, that are definitely worth watching today. Um, like, you know, just to kind of throw some names out there. Uh, L.A. Knight is kind of one of my current uh, current favorites. Uh, AJ Styles is so good. Randy Orton. Um CM Punk, Cody Rhodes. Uh, man, I really hope Cody Rhodes wins at WrestleMania. That story is really, really good. But uh, yeah, um, wrestling has definitely changed and whatnot. Um, I don't know if it'll probably won't ever go back to what it used to be, but you know, there, there's people that are out there that definitely fight it. Of course, MJF too. MJF's really good about keeping kayfabe uh, as well. So yeah, hopefully we'll, they'll at least kind of start seeing uh, some better writing. Uh, speaking of which, here's a, an, another, well, two things I kind of want to bring up. So um, a lot of people don't know, but Freddie Prince Jr. actually wrote for WWE for for a bit, like in the late two no thousands, early twenty tens. He was behind. He was one of the guys behind the idea that Jeff Hardy should win the WWE Championship when he won it around that time. Uh, and he was actually a kind of a uh, a really good writer, from what I've heard. Um, because the other thing too is like kind of why WWE was on that decline is outside of Freddie, because Freddie did a decent job. They were hiring writers from like. TV show backgrounds and stuff like that. People that hadn't really been in wrestling before, so that's kind of why you had like some of these like wonky storylines and uh, stuff like that. But uh, so yeah, Freddie uh, Freddie Prince Jr. was uh, one of the main uh, forces behind uh, Jeff Hardy winning the WWE title when he was uh, very popular at that time. Uh, and two, I before I forget, in case we decide to change subjects, um, so I have a funny story about Paul. Um, so I, I kind of yeah. met Paul through passing. So if you saw last year on my YouTube channel, I met uh, Ralph Macchio and uh, Billy Zapka as, uh, you know, Mr. Miyagi. And so when we were doing that pose, um, they're like, okay, you know, guys, get ready. And so I think what happened was they, when they do stuff, photo ops like that at the con, they have like, they'll have like their solos first. So like William was doing his pictures by himself then Ralph was doing his pictures by himself. Then they kind of grouped together. So then where I was, which was with Billy and Ralph, then they were doing the duo and then they were doing the trios after that. So I think he was kind of coming in for the trio. So anyway, I'm, I'm posing there. I'm doing like the Miyagi Okada. And then Paul just go like, Paul just runs and goes, hi, like, like in front of all of us. And like before, like the basically photo bombing the picture, obviously like you can only get like one copy of the picture. So I don't, I don't have that photo, but it was, it was really funny. Like I had to like laugh and kind of reset stance. So, uh, so yeah, that was, that was pretty funny to him. That That's, that's pretty cool. So yeah, you get, you got the sense that he's like just a really cool guy. Oh yeah. 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 For sure. I know. Yeah. He, he really, he really seems like that. that. And that's, that's so much fun. Um, and that, that was amazing. That costume, because we've had you on before and we've seen some of your cosplays and, uh, how, how cool it's just, uh, so, so fantastic. And, uh, you guys got to follow strife so you can see when he posts, when he does do a cosplay and you did, you did razor Ramon as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I did razor Ramon. Um, I did, I don't know, I don't think I post on my Instagram yet, but when, uh, for this year, the rumble, um, I had friends over and we watched the rumble live because it was in, I forgot where it was, but it wasn't in Texas this time. So we all dressed up and whatnot. Um, and I dressed up as CM Punk. Uh, and so for our WrestleMania watch party, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to probably do the, uh, uh, Cody Rhodes. So I'm actually working on, because Kind of like uh, there was another cosplay I did from Yakuza where I did a temporary tattoo on my back where it's kind of just like you do it in segments and but it's similar to like when you were on a kid you would do the temporary when you were a kid you do the temporary tattoos so it's kind of the same thing with uh, just doing the uh, the neck uh, the neck piece so nice very cool and NASA Kane's fan my goodness thank you so much fifty dollar support thank you um, and NASA says if my wrestling history is correct. The National Wrestling Alliance formed in 1948 with the territory system. The WWE broke off from the NWA and the NWA controlled the territories. The NWA board voted to change the world title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that sounds about is right. That, yeah. And yeah, that's, it, you know, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, I mean, yeah, um, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with like the alliance, um, like the alliance, how it formed and whatnot. But yeah, definitely uh, as 
Kansas saying there's there was territories and of course uh, the main the main thing was just at the end of the day like in the 90s what was like WWE bought out most of the territories and then uh, at the end of the day it was just WWE and WCW and then of course WWE won so um, and then of course you still have like TNA still kind of around Impact and AEW but um, yeah it, they basically just kind of like uh, monopolized everything so that's kind of also why it's it's definitely harder to get in there now because of the standards that they hold and then of course you know, of course, um, the standards sometimes question because of, again, like the descent that they had in the 2010s. So, right. And I have to follow this up by asking, uh, did you see the movie Iron Claw? Oh, Iron yes. Claw. So good. But my yeah. only, I get that movie nine out of 10 only because <laughs> it was kind of, a, it was weird that they left out another Von Eric brother out. They, they completely omitted him from the movie. And I, I get like, I get the director's reasoning was like, well, hey, just be tragedy all over again, but but why make the movie you're not going to tell the full story? I mean, yeah, I, I get it. The movie would have been much sadder and things like that, but I mean, that's that's kind of the whole point that you were making that movie in the, the first place was was examining the tragedies that, you know, befell the Von Eric family. But no, I thought it was good. Zach Efron d- did a really good job. Uh, the other actor, I can't think of his name, uh, the one that played Carrie. Um, the one from the TV show, The Bear? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he, which ironically he should have been Zach Efron's role because he resembled, um, I guess oh, Kevin's yeah. the surviving on here. He kind of resembled Kevin more, but I guess you know they kind of wanted Zach to, uh, to do that. But um, yeah, no, it, it was it was a really good film. Um, uh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, um, I know, and and that's uh, Dave Schrock who's been on here before. Uh, he he loved it. I. I really, uh, I really loved it. I thought it was, um, yeah, I thought it was great. Um, and so, well, Strife, thank you so much. Uh, we might have a lot more to cover, uh, from Paul Walter Hauser in the future. Uh, we'll, we'll have to keep our eyes open. We don't, we don't know where this is going exactly. Um, one thing I did want to kind of get your thoughts on, this is Cobra Kai related before, before we head out today. Okay. Is there is a there's an article on Screen Rant. Eight Karate Kid references we're still waiting for ahead of Cobra Kai season six. So basically, this article kind of goes through like here are some things left that we can do. I want to get your reaction uh, to whether you want to see them, if you think it's likely, that kind of thing. Okay, so number eight is Karate Kids. You're the best song. So we haven't heard that yet in the Cobra Kai series. Do you think this is likely, and should they do it? It would even if it's like a snippet of it, it'd be kind of cool to hear that in the Sakai Takai. Um, it really should have been um in season four, but I also uh understand that like the moment of truth was kind of like the main theme of Karate Kid One that was written for that movie. So I, I get why they did it. Uh but yeah, you're the best should have been um should have been in there. What I you know, easily one of the more iconic songs of that franchise. So yeah, it um definitely uh, definitely should hopefully maybe we'll see at least a snippet of it you know um snippet of it for sure i know i agree and i think the latest live shows that we've seen like the um cobra kai live and badass that was like the promo show in la for season five had a surprise appearance by joe esposito singing that song we were the best around and then uh the cobra kai concert Zach and Leo's Cobra Kai concert, he he came out and sang that again. So it's almost like Joe Esposito has been kind of now in a live sense been associated with Cobra Kai. So yeah, I I hope you're right. I hope they bring back the song somehow. Um and okay, so there's this one. Number seven is Johnny's You're All Right, Lou Russo quote. So this is something I, I've been thinking about watching while watching Cobra Kai is. He did say, you're all right, Lou Russo. He said that to him right at the end of the first Karate Kid movie. But that really hasn't been addressed in the series yet. And I don't know, what what is your thought on that? It actually kind of was addressed, though, at season five, though, which is I'm kind of why surprised that they put it. They, but they kind of they flipped it around. Um, it was when Johnny meets up with Daniel at the, the very last episode of season five after they defeat Terry Silver. And he's like, I think he said so, he says something like "You did all right, Larusso," which I saw that as uh, uh, okay. I saw that as like easy as a reference to that, especially because like they did a handshake and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, I I kind of don't know why this one's on that list uh, because 
the w- with how Cobra Kai writers are very, they almost reference something in every scene. Um, yeah, I, I don't get why this is on this list. So, yep, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Um, okay, so the next one is Mr. Miyagi's other karate student. Of yep, course, of we've course. talked a lot about Julie Pierce. What What are your thoughts on Julie Pierce? We've had the the televised interview, which right, she sort of seems to say she w- doesn't think she'll be on it. But it's kind of weird the way she phrased it. I don't know. What What do you think about Julie Pierce and Hillary Swank? I would. I. I. She really needs to be on. Uh, I mean, the fact that they Daniel referenced one of the sayings that Miyagi taught her, um, you know, means that like, you know, there's definitely some kind of connection there. And not to mention, one of the big three had mentioned that um, they would have met at Miyagi's funeral. So it, it's just kind of weird that they haven't. Uh, than that but also i mean i as i did in my julie pierce video like when season three was around uh she's literally the prototype and the archetype for both sam and tori um like there's a lot Mm -hmm. of the same qualities uh you know that were kind of taken and put into both of them so uh yeah she definitely i would like to in the way i see it this is my thought uh hopefully it happens if it doesn't you know whatever um I don't think they're going to make any of the male senseis fight Kim Daoon. So they're, that'd be like mm-hmm. another reason where they can kind of bring her in to, um, you know, then they, they could be a proper one on one fight. Cause they've had intergender fights in the show before, but they've always left them like very ambiguous. Like, especially when it was Sam versus Robbie or Tori versus Robbie. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely hoping that, uh, you know, she'll be in season six. It'll definitely complete the story. Well, supposedly, uh, some people had mentioned um, that Alicia Hannah Kim, who plays Kim Daun, she has kind of repeatedly on social media when people have said, "Is there anyone you want to fight?" and she'll say, respond and say something like, "Oh yeah, million dollar baby, bring it on," or something like that. Yeah. And then she deletes the posts. And so I, I think the actress is definitely thinking along those same lines too. So right. it, it kind of seems like it should happen. It kind of seems like it should. Um, okay, so this is interesting. The Alpha Elite villains. Do you have a feeling on this? Uh, Ned and Colonel Dugan, etc. It's 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 hard to justify their appearance in Cobra Kai because they were literally uh I don't want to say rip-offs, but they were just literally Cobra Kai clones. Mm-hmm. That's literally what it just kind of came down to. So I I feel like they wouldn't be put in for that reason because of just the fact that you know it would just be kind of like too similar to already Terry and Kreese's storyline of like oh you know uh guy that was in the military taught karate uh and had his own dojo slash organization or whatever so but you know then again if if they're bringing julie then maybe we can see see them and maybe kind of seem some uh some kind of like reformed uh ned basically um, that would be, that'd be kind of really cool because I remember like years before Cobra Kai came out, a lot of people pointed out that both Ned and Johnny were the only ones to kind of uh, switch alliances at the end where, mm-hmm. you know, Johnny, Johnny kind of like, uh, you know, said the whole you're all right, Lou. So then then Ned you know, even turned on Colonel Duke and was like, I thought you had all the answers. So. Right. Yes. And um of course, like just for outside of the story wise, I would it would be so amazing to see Michael Ironside uh, right. in the series. So I and I don't know if it will happen. Like I made a video speculating that Colonel Dugan could have been one mm-hmm. of the characters in the POW camp, or it's possible that Colonel do du- he would be of the age of Vietnam. He seems to have the same mentality as uh, Crease and Silver. He definitely right. seems to be have gone through PTSD. Could could they know each other? Is that is this is, is Colonel Dugan someone that Kreese could call for help? I don't know. Who knows? But you're right. It's kind of like one of those. Eh, maybe <laughs> maybe not. You know. Right. Um. Okay. So other Johnny and Daniel deleted Karate Kid moments. So, and this is referring to like if you get some of the latest releases of the movie, they have deleted scenes from the original Karate Kid, and there was more kind of bullying interaction between johnny and daniel um i don't know so they've already talked about like the blueberry pie thing right. you know um they i don't do you see is it necessary at this point to to bring up these moments again do you think or maybe it's a joke in passing but like no not necessarily 
I mean, the whole Blue Perry Pie thing was, uh, was you know, one one that they kind of already didn't like touched on in season four. So, but no, not necessarily, uh, unless they just kind of talk about it like in a friendly banter. But yeah, right, right. Okay, let's see. Okay, here we go. This could be could be controversial. Uh, some kung fu moments from Jackie Chan's remake from the Karate Kid 2010. Of course, this we have this new Karate Kid movie that's going to be coming out this year. It's about to start shooting. Um, what are your feelings on this? Uh, because this is a very confusing universe bending proposition for the Cobra Kai series. Yeah, I uh, I, I'm interested to see where that the movie goes. Um, because that again, it's just two different universes. Um, so and even then, you'd have to think that Daniel, like it, like Daniel, the, when like this, the the events of this movie take place 2010. Uh, that was when Mr. Miyagi was technically still alive. Um, if we're kind of going by that logic, but yeah, I don't know. It just seems unnecessary to kind of mix these two together because they're just two different things. Um, right. But yeah, I yeah, I guess we'll I guess we'll see. But yeah, I, I don't know. The movie is going to be interesting to say the least. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> or I, I'm so curious to see what's going to happen with the movie. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Let's see. So this next one, Chris and Miyagi's honk moment. Uh, okay so this was kind of already addressed not with crease right but um like with chosen what yeah. like what what do you do you think this is happening or no i don't know it, it, it's kind of it, it's hard to say because it's just like the way they already did it in season three was good enough so like it's just kind of hard to imagine me like Increases like I, you know, I'll never forget the moment where I lost my pride, and then you just hear Miyagi's honk in a flashback. Like it, it's just not going to be serious, you know. Uh, right. I don't. I don't know. It's it's hard. To, it's hard to say. Um. So, um. Unless they do some kind of like reference to a person with no forgiveness in heart, you know, living's worth punishment death thing. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I I think it just needs to be left alone at this point. Right. Right. I know. Yeah. It's, it's really, I, yeah, it seems like we're kind of past that, like crease Miyagi thing, unless somehow crease has a change of heart or he sees some wisdom from Miyagi. I, you know, his animosity towards Miyagi is already well established, I think. Um, right. Okay. Now this Mr. Miyagi mocking Terry silver, of course you'll be everyone. We want to plug the fact that strife, the warrior will be doing, a watch party for Karate Kid 3 coming up this week, right? And right. Uh, can you give us, for everyone watching now, how, how do people join this watch party? Yeah, uh, so just keep an eye on my community post. I'm actually going to, my plan was to post that later today, but uh, I've been doing the watch parties pretty much every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, in a Discord server. And it'll uh, it'll have like the link to the server and like the, how to join the event. So uh, yeah, so definitely. So the plan is, obviously we've done Karate Kid 1 and 2, 3. Next week will be, uh, next Karate Kid, which I know a lot of people are like, uh, but you know it's still canon. Um, yeah. And then what I'm probably going to do to kind of make it, the season still somewhat watchable, uh, because it's like five hours to go through one season. I'm probably just going to split them in half and maybe do like uh, both have a season each week or something like that. So uh, basically, just do like you know episodes one through five and then six through ten. So but yeah, so keep an eye out my uh, channel details later today, my social media, and I'll definitely uh, promote it. So. I I'm I am going to absolutely try to be there because I want to I want to be there uh, for Karate Kid three a hundred percent. So we'll uh, re, I'll repost out of my channels. Everyone follow Stripe the Warrior so you don't miss it. Um, so that being said, if you join us, we will see this moment on Wednesday of Mr. Miyagi mocking Terry Silver. It's a very famous moment. It was uh, kind of improvised between Thomas Ian Griffith and Pat Morita. Uh, do you think we should see this again? It would be funny, but I don't know if it would if it would work. Like, uh, it, it, it would have to just come from. I think Chosen would be have the one to be be the one to do it for it to kind of right. really have that effect. So, right, yeah, I totally agree. And i i hadn't I hadn't thought about this because you know Terry Silver. You know, if we're talking about Terry Silver, Tom Cole connections, we haven't seen Tom Cole in a while. But like, um, that was a moment that was improvised by David Shatra in the first season when he's mocking uh 
Daniel LaRusso and he's going with the Wasa oh, right. thing. Right. And that's, it's interesting that that's kind of similar in a way to, uh, to this mocking, but oh yeah, for sure. yeah, I, that might be as close as we get uh, <laughs> to, uh, to right. that coming back. Um, so interesting, interesting list. Good list. I always appreciate, uh, Angel Shaw. Thank you for, for writing this, uh, who wrote the screen rant article. That was fun to talk about. Uh, so, Strife, uh, what are your thoughts overall? Uh, we're, we're in a big year. Uh, we've got Cobra Kai Season 6, which supposedly will be coming out this year. Uh, you've also got this new Karate Kid movie. Uh, it's been 40 years since 1984 when we first had the Karate Kid. It's kind of a big year. What What are you looking forward to this year? Definitely Season 6. Um, the movie will definitely be interesting, too. I, I Hopefully, when we see a trailer, maybe it'll kind of like ease some of our fears because I'm just still kind of like... I'm not sure if these two universes really should be mixing, but we'll see. If they can do it right, then, you know, whatever. But yeah, definitely looking forward to season six. For me, it'll definitely be an end of an era because I'll probably just be kind of like wrapping up all the Cobra Kai content. So, um, yeah, unless there's like a spinoff or something that comes out, it'll be the end of me kind of working on uh, anything Cobra Kai related. So, I know. That's something, too, like as content creators, it'll be interesting to see. It's kind of like the end of an era. We've, we've had a lot of uh, discussions about cobra kai and what's going to happen and the karate kid universe going forward and after this i mean there could be spinoffs uh we could have more content to create but maybe not or maybe not for a while so i i, I don't know uh let us know everyone watching this uh if you're still interested in talking about these things even after the show's over or you know I don't know what, whatever you're interested in. Um, yeah, I, I honestly strife. I don't know what I, I think I'm always going to be talking about it somehow, but you're right. As far as speculation goes, it'll be over. Yep. End of an era. All good things must come to an end. So no kidding, man. It's been, it's been fun. It's been fun. Um, well, okay. So for everyone who's just joining us, um, we're, we're actually, we're about to end, uh, but I want to thank Strife the Warrior for joining us today. I'll have information posted in the description pretty soon, but Strife, can you tell us uh, where everyone can find you? Yeah, easiest place, of course, youtube.com slash Strife the Warrior. Um, I'm working on uh, a lot of shorts and stuff coming up, so definitely be on the lookout for those. And of course, the watch parties and the Discord. I'm not as active on Twitter anymore, uh, or X as it's now known as, but you can find me find, sometimes also find me on Instagram, same thing, Instagram.com slash Strife the Warrior. But yeah, be on the lookout, and of course, uh, tune into the watch party if you can. So, Absolutely. I will be there Wednesday for the watch party. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, Strife, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Always a pleasure to talk to you, and I look forward to talking to you again soon uh, about many, many different topics. Um, so everyone who's watching who is a channel member, finalist, and above after this, I will be doing kind of like the private live stream chat with you guys. So please stick, stick around for that. And then if you've enjoyed this today, go ahead and hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, both on this channel and on Stripe the Warriors channel if you're not already subscribed. And so you don't miss anything going forward. Strife, this is a fun year. I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Same here, Ken. Thanks for having me. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we will see you next time on KenCast. Want to be part of the live KenCast show? Subscribe to the Ken Cole YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get alerts about every new show. Thanks for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you next time on KenCast. Mm -hmm.